So we're now looking at a risk return relationship and we're going to use an example here about the optimal speed to drive down the highway. Now when we talk about optimal speed, right, we all get in our cars, we drive down the freeway, right? Our objective when we get in our car and go from point A to point B is we are trying to get to point B as fast as possible. However, there is a little bit of a kink there that doesn't allow us to get there as fast as possible because we can run into police officers, right, that might pull us over if we're going too fast. We could also have an increase in the possibility of getting in an accident, okay? And there's also some traffic and, and things like that. But generally speaking, we're going to make an assumption right now that we want to get to point B as fast as possible given our certain level of risk, okay? Now we know that if we decide to drive faster, okay, if we are driving fast, is that we will have a higher risk of getting pulled over, okay? So we're going to just start this here by having talking about what our objective is. And our objective is get there fastest, okay, without a ticket, all right? That's, that's our objective, get there as fast as possible without getting a ticket. Um, now, we're gonna make a couple of assumptions with what we're going here. We're gonna assume that there is no traffic, okay? Uh, because we know traffic can be variable, you can go as fast as you want, except for if there's a car in front of you. So we're gonna assume right now that, that there's no traffic, and with there's no traffic, we're also going to assume there's no uh, chance of an accident. Okay, so if we can't get an accident, no traffic, the only thing that we have to worry about is the police officer for pulling us over, okay? So um, what we're going to find here is we're going to figure out what our optimal speed is going to be for us to get from point A to point B, okay? Because we have to weigh that risk-return relationship, okay? Now, let's say that the speed limit is a 70 mile per hour speed limit okay and we have a 35 mile trip okay and so we're trying to figure out what is going to be worth it for us to get there okay so a couple of our options here is that uh what will if we're trying to maximize our return here all right so this is a relationship from looking at that risk return relationship on the impact on asset pricing right is that we want to select the speed at which it's going to deliver us the highest return, right? So it's gonna get us there the faster at the lowest tolerable risk, okay? We know we can get there faster, but we're gonna take more risk, okay? And there is a certain point at which it becomes too risky for us, okay, given the possible return. Okay, so we know if the 70 mile per hour speed limit, will we go ever go slower than 70 miles per hour? No, what we could do, so scenario one here, is we are going to go 70 miles per hour, right? And there is a 0% chance of, of a ticket. Okay, so there's a 0% chance of getting a, a speeding ticket. And what that means is we take our 35 miles, divide that by our 70 miles per hour, Right? And that tells us it's going to take 0.5 hours to get to our objective. Okay, So we're going to see about some of those things we can do in which to get us there a little bit faster than that. Okay, So one of those things we could say is we could increase our speed to 120 miles per hour. Okay. Now at 120 miles per hour, okay, there is a much higher chance of us getting a ticket, okay? But there's not necessarily going to be a police officer there on the road, okay? So what we're gonna assume here is that there is, say, a 50% chance that there is a police officer on this 35 mile stretch of highway, okay? If I pass a police officer going 120 miles per hour in a 70 mile per hour zone, what do you think my chances are getting pulled over, right? If there's a cop there, I'm definitely getting pulled over, but there's a 50% chance the cop is there. So we have, we're gonna say we have a 50% chance of getting a ticket, right? Because it's going to be, if the cop's there, I'm definitely getting a ticket, okay? So um, what that's showing us here is that we have our 35 miles divided by our 125 mile per hour, which means that it's going to take us 0.29 hours, okay? Which is 17 minutes, okay? 
Now, that is at the extreme. I'm going really fast here, doing that in a, in a high high speed. Is that something that I should be, should I be going that fast? Maybe, maybe not, right? That's gonna depend on my risk tolerance. If I'm late for a job interview, right? And if I don't make it there on time, I'm definitely not getting the job. I might take more risk at that point in time and I might drive 120 miles an hour. Alternatively, I could just go at 70 miles an hour at the speed limit and I'll be just fine depends on our risk tolerance and our how much we want to do, okay? So that's something each of us drives at, at different speeds, okay? We're gonna call that 70 miles per hour our risk-free rate, right? Because there's no risk of getting, it, of getting a ticket there, okay? So we know we shouldn't be going slower than that. And any speed above that is that we're taking risk and we need to get more compensation, okay? We also know that the faster we go, the higher the risk is of getting a ticket. So we are probably going to select a speed somewhere in between that 70 and 100. So we did make the assumption here that we set our speedometer on our, our cruise control. The thing we need to look at next though is what happens when we have a variable speed. Okay, I'll just tell you a quick story real quick is that I, when I drive down the freeway, I often set my, my cruise control at 80 miles an hour, okay? And one of those things I, def, I notice all the time is that I'll pass a car, my, my speed doesn't change, I pass a car, and then a car comes flying past me, and then I pass them again, and then they come flying past me again, right? They have a hugely variable speed, okay? So we're gonna look at what, basically what the risk-return relationship is going to be on a variable speed, okay? So um, when we're showing this here is that let's say we have, this is another scenario here, we have a, we're gonna spend 50% of our time at 90 miles per hour, and we're gonna spend 50% of our time at 70 miles per hour, okay? We know that at 70 miles per hour, there is a 0% chance of a ticket, okay? And we'll say that at 90 miles an hour, okay, there is a 15% chance of a ticket, okay? And we're saying that if a cop's there and then we'll get pulled over, whatever. Sometimes, you know, they'll turn a blind eye if you're going 90, whatever, okay? 15% chance of a ticket. So what we have here is that we have an average speed. We have an average speed of 80 miles per hour which we divide our 35 miles by the 80 miles per hour, which means that it will take us 0.44 hours, okay? A little less than a half an hour, right? Because we're going at an average speed of 80 miles per hour. So it's gonna be 0.44 hours, and then we're gonna see what our risk is here, right? We have a 50% chance, so 50% of our time we're spending at 90 miles an hour, okay? So we have 50% of our time at, at 90, which means we have a, a uh, at a 15% chance of a ticket, plus we have a 50% chance of not getting a ticket. So essentially here, we have a 7.5% chance of getting a ticket, and it's gonna take us 0.44 hours, okay? Now, would it be more or less risky if we were to make a, ver a much larger variable speed? Let's say that we're going to spend 30% of our time at 120 miles per hour. Okay, and then we're gonna spend the rest of the time, that 70% of the time, at 63 miles per hour, okay? So at 63 miles per hour, there is a 0% chance of a ticket, and at 120 miles an hour, we said that there is a 50% chance of a ticket, okay? So what is our average speed going to be? Our average speed here is still 80 miles per hour. Okay, which means that we will arrive at our destination in 0.44 hours. Same exact one as the one before. But is this gonna be a riskier scenario for me if I'm driving down the highway, spending 30% of my time at 120 and then scaling back to 63 miles an hour? Absolutely this is gonna be, be a higher chance of getting a ticket. Because if a cop sees me going 120, I'm definitely gonna get busted on that ticket, okay? So we have here 30% of our time is spent at 120 miles an hour, and that means that we have a 50% chance of getting a ticket, plus we have 70% of our time is spent at 63 and a zero ticket, which means here that we have a 15% chance of getting a ticket, okay? So we have now these two examples. It's gonna take us 
a uh, little under half an hour. Um, and it's, we now have a higher probability of getting a ticket, right? And that ticket that I'm going to get at 120 miles an hour, that's going to cost a lot more than that ticket at 90 miles an hour, okay? So that's kind of where we're at now, is that basically what we have here is the two differences here. We have the same exact expected values, but we have an increased risk, okay? Since we have an increased risk, should we be driving at 120 miles an hour and 63 miles an hour? No. No, we should not be doing that because we're taking excess risk and we're not getting the return that we need from it, okay? Now, if I do need to arrive in 0.44 hours, right? If I do need to arrive in that amount of time, what speed should I be driving at? Should I be driving spending 50% of my time at 90 miles an hour and 50% at 70 miles an hour? No, what we should be doing is that we should be setting our cruise at 80 miles per hour, right? We should be setting our cruise at 80 miles per hour. That would mean we have an expected value here. It's going to take us 0.44 hours or 26 minutes. It's gonna take us 26 minutes to arrive at our destination, okay? But our risk here is going to be a lower amount of risk because at 80 miles per hour, we're gonna say we have a 5% chance of a ticket. Okay. As we go faster, we have an increased possibility of getting a ticket. If I'm only going 10 over, it's going to have to be a speed trap in order to pull me over, right? A, right? So, 5% chance of a ticket. So, what we see here is that that is giving us at 80 miles an hour, right? These, these two examples right here, 80 miles an hour, it's taking us the same exact amount of time, but we're doing it at lower risk, okay? So what we're doing here is that this is what we refer to as a standard standard distribution. Our standard deviation on our standard distribution, our standard deviation gets wider as it did when we're going 120 to 63. As it gets wider, it becomes much more risky. Okay? So we need to tighten that up and make that expected value. We set our cruise exactly at the 80 miles an hour, and we're not going to be subject to getting uh, getting hammered by that cop because we're going too fast. Okay. All right. So the point of all of this, right? The point of all of this is that we need to be able to maximize our return, giving a lower level of risk. When we have a wider distribution of possible outcomes, that is going to increase our risk. And as such, we need to increase our compensation for the risk. Okay. Now that optimal speed is just like determining our optimal uh, risk tolerance, right? Younger people are going to have more risky investments than people that are in retirement, right? It's our risk tolerance and each of us individually drives at different speeds, okay? Because each of us has different risk tolerances, okay?